You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And I'm Robin. You're listening to episode number 351. Thank you, everybody, for being with us. We appreciate it. Yes, we do. And we've got a great episode for you talking about private property. You know, it's interesting because we're on episode 351, and it actually kind of shocks me getting this question that we haven't had it before. Yeah, it is true. Because it's a good question. Well, I think a lot of people um, just, I think a lot of people kind of know a little bit about photography law and private property versus public property, but I think a lot of people too at the same time know that again, very gray area, uh, lots of little nuances, but we hope to clear up those nuances. We hope to clear up some of those issues for you today in the show. I will say very excited about the subject tracking class. I just want to mention that really quick. We've got two new sponsors coming on board next week, so look out for their material. Very excited about that. Um, But I will say if you are interested in the subject tracking course, I think we have one spot left. Let us know if you're interested in leveling up your skill. I mean, I think this is going to be one of those amazingly fun experiences, Rob, because they're going to be out on a lake, private area, no one to bug you. You get to learn how to fly and track subjects like a boat. It is going to be a blast. Well, it is going to be a blast, so a lot of fun, but even more importantly, it's going to take your skill and your ability to market yourself to a level that... um, I don't know, you might not even think you could have gotten to. Yeah, well, it's true. I mean, if you didn't have the self-confidence or the self-value, you're definitely going to have a higher perceived value now. Um, And the other cool thing about this class is if you do sign up, you're going to get some one-on-one time with this guy and some one-on-one time with me to help out with your business, whatever that may be, whatever needs you may have. Anyway, wanted to let you know about that. If you're interested in the subject tracking course, it is June 15th. I know that's two weeks away, uh, but we would love to hear from you if you are interested. Again, we've got, just, like, I think it's one spot left. So we would love to hear from you. Just email us, support at thedroneu.com. And today's question is brought to you by the subject tracking course. So thank you guys so much. And let's hear this question, Ron. Do it. Hi, guys. Glenn in Massachusetts. Um, first thing that needs to be said is, way to go, Paulie. He's taking the dive. Paulie's taking the dive. That's an East Coast accent for you. So, riding on errands this morning, I come across a uh, gas station that's being rebuilt. And they are uh, got the cement trucks out, and the c- trucks are spinning the concrete, and it looks awesome. And I'm, like, taking pictures. So, I pull over. Of course, I start flying, and here comes the uh, the uh, uh, shop, uh, the foreman of the site. Hey, you can't do that here. And I said, well, sure I can. And he says, no, it's private property. They're not going to like that. I'm like, who's they? Who's they? And I'm like, okay, so that's great. And I'm still filming, of course, because I can take pictures. So then he's like, you can't do that. It's private property said, okay, but if I was standing right there pointing at the sidewalk with my cell phone and I was taking pictures, that would be all right, right? He says, yeah. So I go over to the sidewalk and I stand there and I continue to fly my copter. So the big thing is, and I think this would be helpful to a lot of people, is uh, maybe some basic photography law. When can you take pictures of things? What isn't uh, allowed? Um, We know there's no privacy anywhere until you go inside your door. I can take photographs of you walking down the street all the way up to the door of your house. Once you close that door, it becomes private. Otherwise, you're in the public domain. So um, I think a little enlightenment on what you guys know about it uh, would be really helpful to newbies and professionals alike. Thanks. And way to go, Pauly! I think he's talking about uh, uh, the engagement with Sarah's taking the dive in or putting the old ball and chain on, you know? <laughs> no, not at all. It's a good thing. We're all very happy. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, let's get into this. If I've got a crazy old lady and she's like, don't fly your drone over my house and you took off from your own house or public land, can you do it? Well, I think legally, technically, you can. 
we also have to bring into this conversation the aspect of courtesy and oh, absolutely. respecting other people's wishes. Absolutely. Because and- I just want to make sure that gets injected as we'll talk about. But legally, I think what we've discovered is that there's a lot more freedom to the photographer than than I knew. Well, I think so. And, you know, one thing that I've heard, uh, I read some articles before we did the podcast about, uh, you know, if you've got a nosy neighbor who's flying their drone uh, over your property, do you have any rights? And it's funny because they are really trying to make a case for the neighbor having rights. Um, but we know from the Cosby versus U.S. case that, you know, Property owners do have a right to their airspace, but they never define how high right. that airspace you know, goes. Uh, it's only the usable airspace of the property itself. Now, that being said, uh, we, we still don't condone just you know, flying around your neighbor's windows or flying around your neighbor's home. Obviously, if you're flying over the neighborhood at a high elevation, no big deal. You know? um, and I always tell everyone... Really, the way that you should look at this issue is you should not fly below the treetops of your neighbor's house Um, because once you go below the treetops, you could actually get yourself in trouble. And again, we don't if if you're filming a private property, if you're filming a house, we don't really condone just doing it. We condone, you know, using Legal Flyer, the app. That's what it's for, the property release form, Um, because that will save your butt. If anyone were to ever say, oh, this drone was flying over my house and taking pictures, uh, and you're like, well, I have private property permission, you know, any argument goes away in the wind right there. Yeah. Uh, Now, that being said, if you're you're taking off and landing from a public space like Glenn was in this construction site, and he's taking pictures of the construction site, there's nothing from stopping him to do that. It's only the fear from whoever the contractor was. But, I mean, legally speaking, there's nothing stopping him from doing that. No, not at all. As we understand it, you can take pictures of just about anything that's in a public place, or if you're, if you're taking them from a public place, including people, which... One of the interesting things that I read was that that includes children. I just thought I read two or three different things, and they always mentioned children. But that's if you're using the photos like yourself, not selling the photos. Because if you're selling the photos and there is a person who is recognizable in your image or in your video, then you have to have a model release form. Now, if you you know, take a video of people walking down the pier and you can't really see the person's face and they're not recognizable, you would not need a model release. But if you're doing this for a hobby, if you're doing this just for yourself, you wanted some you know, some images of the area you're going out with your family and this is just your family uh, photography, then you're 100% correct. Yeah, you can take images of just about anything in public. I just wonder how true that is. And I'd really like to dig into the law, which we didn't do necessarily for this. Um, Maybe we could get John on to talk about this as well. But one of the things that comes to mind, Paul, is that there are a lot of people like there's, for example, a guy that I think it's on Facebook maybe, but he's doing this series on the people of New York, right? And so he just goes around New York and he takes pictures of random people. And as I understand it, and based on what I've seen and read from him, I don't think he gets a model release from any of these people. Well, um, but the point is, is making money though doing it because well, there's, yeah. there's a guy here in Albuquerque, Billy. Uh, who owns the Brevet Coffee and Crepe Place, and he owns the Facebook page, The People of Albuquerque. In fact, I've actually been on that page. Um, but <laughs> you're, well, you're a person of Albuquerque, <laughs> so that's fitting. Um, but he asks before he takes a photo of anyone, do you mind if I take a picture of yeah, you? Yeah, I think that's the courteous thing to do. Yeah. So, And I know a verbal, uh, you know, anything in this world verbally is useless. I mean, literally, even my dad growing up, he said, unless something someone puts it in writing, it's valueless. Right. Like, it has no meaning, no value whatsoever. Um, but a lot of people, you know, kind of go on the faith-based, you know, hey, you tell me it's okay, I'm going to do it, and I'll fight yeah. tooth and nail if you, you know, turn your back on that later. So, yeah, you know, but you get crazy people sometimes, and that's why I don't do the whole verbal thing. Uh, that's why I love Legal Flyer. Like, honestly, if you don't have Legal Flyer... <sighs> I don't know. You're you're setting yourself up for liability because you literally can nix any claim against you 
with Legal Flyer. I mean, if you're flying a house for real estate, because we had another member who posted in the Drone U group that, you know, one of his, he was flying a home and a neighbor came up and said, if you don't get that drone uh, up over my house or out of my airspace, I'm going to shoot it out of the sky. And the guy was like, well, sir, you'll be shooting an aircraft and that's a federal crime. But if you do it, please do it because uh, I've got video of you doing it. I've got a picture of you yelling at me here. So I've already got my evidence racking up against you. By the way, I have private property permission from this homeowner to shoot this house for a real estate video. I don't care what's in your backyard. I don't care what's in your property. I'm not even looking at your property. I may be flying adjacent to it because I'm trying to take an image of this house that is next to yours, but this has nothing to do with you. And I'm yeah. sorry that, you know, like, it's funny because the guy took a little far. He's like, I'm sorry, you're so vain. And like, well, <laughs> and I, I would have said the same thing, to be honest with you. Well, okay. So, so and, and the lesson here is to, to do this in a courteous way, right? In a respectful way. And understand that there is some fear associated with this for people. And a lot of this, I think, is just education and letting them know essentially what you said but from an education standpoint of this is my goal. I'm not intending to have anything to do with anything that is about you. Understand that, but this is the but job that I've been. you look great in your boxers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, may I, may I take a picture? <laughs> I don't know. But the bottom line as far as getting photo or photographs is that in public places, you can take pictures of just about anything. Well, yeah, there's no reasonable right to privacy. So, Rob, I saw these 10 commandments of photography law, but I will, I do want to kind of state really quick yes. that this is in, these t top 10 things are in the case that you are not selling your footage whatsoever. Yeah, so your intent is not to use these commercially. That's the main caveat to this. Because, let's just put it this way, besides everything we're about to tell you, if you film someone, they're recognizable, even if they're in public and you sell it, you gotta have a model release. So, okay. Anyway, cool. all right. So, top ten commandments. Number one, public place means you can shoot anything, mm -hmm. anyone, even crime, accidents, firefighters, ambulance, the whole nine yards. Um, if <clears throat> if you're standing in a public place and take pictures of private property, that's okay too. Uh, number three, on private property, if you're on private property, meaning literally if you are physically on private property, you have a ground camera, and you are asked to stop filming, you must. But this goes back to, you know, if you have a drone and you take off from a public area and you fly over a private property, and as long as you're not below the treetops, there's nothing that they can do about it. Right. So now, again, I'm going to say it one more time. I've said it before. If you're going to fly over private property and you're doing it for work, use legal flyer. It will save your butt. Yep. Anyway, um, number four, some sensitive government buildings won't allow you to take photographs. Uh, number five, uh, people are okay to shoot in public. Um, I, I, it's funny that you mentioned this, too, because you're like, I, 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 when you said earlier, you can take pictures of children, like... Yeah, well, it's just fascinating to me that they are they specifically mention that in everything that I'm reading because I think the the idea would be that you shouldn't take pictures of children and that might still be a good rule of thumb, particularly well, those that aren't yours, right? Yeah, no, totally, and and that's definitely a little weird uh, yeah, to say the least. Exactly. But Texas does have a law where it's improper photography, mm -hmm. and if it's used for sexual intent or for anything that's questionable. That's a felony too. So. Yeah, but so there are different state laws, and we're kind of going over the the federal laws. Do you have the rest of the Ten Commandments there, sir? Yeah, I do. We want to run through them real quick. Go so ahead. this is interesting. The following can almost always be photographed from public places, despite public opinion. So I think that's a really interesting point because a lot of times we base decisions and our thoughts on what has what is ultimately just opinion because it's so pervasive. But anyway, so you kind of mentioned some of these accident, fire scene, criminal activities, bridges, infrastructure, industrial facilities, Superfund sites, public utilities, children, celebrities, celebrities, law enforcement officers. <laughs> this is funny. UFOs, Loch Ness Monster. I think they're being facetious there. But the point is... Hey, we live near Roswell, so you so better be So anything's possible. That's true. You're absolutely right. But anyways, I think the point is you can take pictures of just about anything. Just, you know, use common sense when you're doing that kind of thing. Number yeah. seven, 
Um, security is often given as a reason that somebody doesn't want you to take photos, but it's rarely valid. Again, be careful with that. You don't want to push people's buttons just for the sake of getting a picture that's not really that True. big of a deal. And if you're in, if you're challenged by somebody, you don't have to explain why you're taking pictures. You don't have to explain your or um, disclose your identity. Um, private par- par- parties have very limited rights to detain you against your will. Duh. That's kind of funny. Good luck with that if you're trying to detain me and you're just Joe Blow. And then if somebody tries to confiscate your film or your camera, they don't have a right to do that. Obviously, if law enforcement tries to do that, yeah. even then, um, as as we understand it, they would need a court order. But you've got to be respectful and manage that situation yeah. carefully. It's just like when you get pulled over and the cop asks you the question that's trying to put you in the corner. Sir, do you know why I pulled you over? Right. And I would be like, no, sir, are you trying to philosophize with me? <laughs> <laughs> Again. It, it, I mean, it's so funny because we have these conversations. It's a really good question. But I think ultimately, as with so many of these questions, it comes down to using common sense, mm-hmm. being respectful of other people, being courteous of other people, and more than likely, you're going to be okay. Well, true. And, you know, the other idea here is that we want to progress the industry. Yeah, And the only definitely. way that we're going to really do that is if we stay positive in the public eye. Right. And the negative news, I, I came up with a new name for NBC, the Negative Broadcasting Company. Um, <laughs> well, we'd have to find something similar for all of them then. Uh, yeah. Right. Ooh, ABC, the aggressive broadcasting okay. company. I like that. Anyway, um, you know, the news tried to give drones a negative limelight for like the past two years. And then in even the last six months, we've been seeing the drone stories kind of change and mold because the journalists want to use the drones. And they've yeah. realized that if we create a negative image of drones, we're not going to be able to use them We're ourselves. hurting ourselves. Yeah. yeah Which is hilarious because it just goes to show that the media is trying to control what you think and how you think about it. Yeah. Um, but when you get into these situations and people are confronting you, don't be a smart aleck. Don't be a butthole. Relax. <laughs> and just have a conversation and educate. I, I'm sorry. I just keep thinking about this one time. I was on a beach and this girl was like, are you taking pictures of me? I know there's a camera on that drone and it was facing towards me. And, 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 and I, I, was I, like, g- I was like, oh, do you see that over there? Oh, that sunset is just so gorgeous. <laughs> oh, man. I can't stop looking at it. But you look like a dot on the screen, so no, I'm not interested. <laughs> See? So it's a fine line. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, like, that lady, like, walked up really aggressively. Oh, I know. Like, I and get then, it. You know, there was a video that was posted Everybody on YouTube yesterday where this girl literally stole someone's FPV racer and put it under her shirt, tried walking out of the park. The FPV racer is still recording, and he's recording from his goggles and on the GoPro oh itself. <laughs> so the cops show up, right? And she's got the drone in her shirt. Oh, and the guy literally, the FPV racer, shows the cop his screen and says, my drone is under her shirt. She stole it from me. And it was just like... I love technology because it cuts <laughs> through the BS. It's like, you know what? If you're going to steal my drone and my drone's still recording, you're going down. And I'm going to enjoy every second of it <laughs> for you being just negative towards society. It's like, you know what? You're not helping anybody. So, sorry. I gotta, Fair enough. Had to get that passion there. Fair uh, enough. Before we go, before we wrap this up, um, I have one little piece of news here I got from a senator. I got to mention it. Um, And I quote from Phil Chang, C-H-A-N-G, not C-H-E-N-G. Subject, FAA Commercial UAS Rulemaking Part 107 Update. Hello, just wanted to let you know that we contacted the FAA to inquire about when the rulemaking will be complete. They said that they are, quote unquote, wrapping up the details of the rule and want to publish the final version sometime before the end of the month. Whoa. They didn't offer more detail than that at this point, but we will be watching till the end of the month. Thanks, Phil Chang, Office of U.S. Senator Jeff Merkley. Well, that's encouraging. Yeah. So, For real? Like I said, 21st, you know, if yeah. we're talking about the end of spring. The end of spring. <laughs> so, <laughs> 19 <laughs> days away. <laughs> Anyway, guys, I just want to give you that update. But if you have a question, go to askadroneu.com and upload that question there. We really want the business questions. But I will say this. Last night, 
I went over like 10 questions to go over with John Rupert, who will be coming on Friday, which... Well, will, and I think this is one that what we talked about today would be a good one to spend just a couple of minutes with him on, get his perspective. Well, we have to be careful because a couple of minutes could turn into a couple hours. No so. doubt. <laughs> good <laughs> John, editing. John, we love you. We might, oh, no, we appreciate it, but a yeah. little editing might be in order. And by the way, guys, if you're looking for a community of pilots that have similar interests to you... And they're wanting to grow their ability to fly, their understanding of how to o- operate a, a drone business. Check out the membership at DroneU, which you can do at thedroneu.com, and then get started. That's one of the great places to start. Learn a little bit more about us. Well, it's so much more than just education. You know, it's that community. It's that yeah. step beyond the school. It's, it's that just, continuous learning process because yeah. the learning process should never stop. Well, yeah, if you want to keep the competitive advantage right. at least. So right. anyway, guys, you should check that out. We've got a lot of new courses coming out on top of the courses that are already in there, on top of the resources that are already in there, and all the other stuff. You should definitely check it out, thedroneu.com. We would greatly appreciate it. If you like this podcast, check it out for us. We really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You.